Today we're going to be looking at getting started with RAD Breadcrumb. As a reminder, RAD Breadcrumb is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we'll see what it takes to add a brand new RAD Breadcrumb to your application, and then we'll explore adding a root element and see exactly why we need a root element for our display purposes, and finally we'll add some hierarchical data and take a look at the features and functionality of RAD Breadcrumb in action. Starting in Visual Studio, we use the Telerik Visual Studio extensions. Choose RAD controls for Silverlight, create a brand new Telerik project. From here we want to make sure Telerik and Silverlight are selected. So we'll do a C Sharp RAD control Silverlight application. And we'll call this RAD Breadcrumb.getting started. We'll keep all the default values to create a brand new Silverlight 5 application. From the configuration wizard, we'll go ahead and scroll down, select navigation, which will also select the required Telerik Windows controls assemblies and click Finish. Now that Visual Studio is all loaded, we can see we have the Telerik Windows Controls and Controls Navigation Assemblies already set in our project, as well as the Telerik namespace. So we can go ahead and start developing. We'll create a brand new Telerik Rad Breadcrumb. X name is X Rad Breadcrumb, and we'll set it to vertical alignment top, just so it displays in the right spot. We can now see there's a rad breadcrumb up here, but it's not doing anything too exciting. So we actually want to go ahead and step into the data portion of our code and the code behind and create first a class and then some data to display. For this, we'll add a brand new public class breadcrumb data class. And we'll give this public int ID, public string header text. And we'll also add a public list of breadcrumb data class and call this crumbs. We'll initialize that in a breadcrumb data class constructor. And now we have a class we can use to hold some data. Do a really quick save and jump back into our main page constructor, go into the loaded event, and here we want to create some fake data to use within our rad breadcrumb. So the first thing we want to do here is create a brand new breadcrumb data class. We'll call this root. And we can set some quick values. So root.id equals zero. Root.header text equals root. And we're not going to add anything to the crumbs collection yet, but we're going to be able to set this to our rad breadcrumb header. So say x rad breadcrumb dot header equals root. We also need to tell the header what member we're going to be using for that display value. So we can now say x rad breadcrumb dot header member path. Maybe remember this is going to be header text. And now if we want to, we can go ahead and run this and see how our root is being displayed. Give it an explore a second. Now we see rad breadcrumb, we see our root element, but there's not much you can do. If we drop down into history, we actually don't even see anything there. So we have a few more tweaks to do to actually get this up and running. Stepping back into our code, I actually have a handy little snippet here for adding some quick items to our collection. So in a nutshell, we're going to do two for loops, one to add a first child level, the second to add a grandchild level, and all we're basically doing is setting the ID and header text, adding them to the collections, adding everything to root. So now we have a root element with a full crumbs collection, each of which additionally has a child collection. So now we need to do a little bit more work to actually get this displaying in our rad breadcrumb instance. So we can go ahead and say, X red breadcrumb dot hierarchical item source. And this is going to be the crumbs collection on each item. And we also need to set red breadcrumb dot hierarchical member path. This is once again going to be our header text. Now there's two more things we need to go ahead and set. We can first go to red breadcrumb dot text mode path and set this once again to header text so that when we're in our text mode of navigating, we'll be utilizing the header text property for what we're going to be typing. And last but certainly not least, our xrad breadcrumb dot item source equals root dot crumbs. So that first level collection. Go ahead, save this, run it one more time. And now we see something slightly different. We have our root element, but we can go ahead and expand that and see the different child items those have. And once we go into a child item, go ahead and dive farther down to the hierarchy to choose one of the grandchildren. So we have root, the child collection, and then Nat's child collection. What's even better, if we click on this down arrow, we'll see our history items so we can go back to root child three very quickly. This also enables us to go and quickly navigate through a few different items. And after we do so, go back and check so we can quickly navigate back to one of them. 
and it was all just that easy to set up. So I hope you've seen how quickly and easily you can add a brand new RAD breadcrumb instance to your application. Stay tuned for more videos in this series where we take a look at how we can further enhance the look and feel of RAD breadcrumb, as well as how we can integrate RAD breadcrumb with RAD tree view for an even more compelling effect.